Yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. So, Bethesda finally released their first new game world in 25 years, and their first major release at all in 8 years. And no Fallout 76, you don't count. But now, after 8 years in development, Starfield's out, and there's one question that people just can't seem to answer. Is the game good? It seems like games in this genre of procedurally generated space exploration always launch with hype and disappointment, swirling around them like this kind of sweaty, Cheeto dust encrusted yin and yang that makes it really hard to determine whether or not the game's worth it, especially when it comes with a $70 to $100 price tag. So, in order to properly prepare my opinion on the game, I had to play it for myself. Oh shit, look at that rocket. I can't even tell if this is a cutscene or if I'm playing right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our destination lies beyond the stars. Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. What you just said. Wow. You can tell that a lot of a lot of time and money went into this. You can tell the devs really cared about it. I mean, it's hard to say right now whether or not Starfield's worth it, but this is certainly an experience. And then an hour and a half after my preload of the game was supposed to be ready to play, this is the quality you expect from a Bethesda title. Steam finished unpacking all 116 gigabytes of Starfield, and I could finally create my character. Meet Grandma Jolene Joman, a woman akin to moldy bread in that she has grown harder and greener the longer she's been around. And after a long life of violent crime, she'd like to finally retire to a quiet life of morally ambiguous crime. Physically strong, she opts to use only melee weapons, as pulling triggers on guns hurts her arthritic hands. So now, I invite you to come along on the story of Grandma Jolene's retirement as I sprinkle in my disorganized thoughts about Starfield, ultimately answering the question, is the game good? Now fair warning, I'll try to avoid unnecessary spoilers in this video, but I will be spoiling a couple small side quests and large parts of a certain faction quest line because they're intrinsic to Jolene's story. Now, a lot of you have probably heard this 12-hour rumor about Starfield, that it starts out boring but gets good about 12 hours in. Well, I think the 12-hour number is completely arbitrary and people have just kind of latched onto it, but the game certainly does take a bit to get into, and I think that's for a few reasons. Firstly, the tutorial is slow as hell. I'll admit that I wasn't exactly fast doing the tutorial. You can skip tutorial. Okay, I'm not skipping the tutorial, to be honest. I think I probably need this. I didn't listen to it. What, what am I supposed to do next? Oh, I accidentally powered up all systems to skip the tutorial. How did I accidentally skip the tutorial? What do you mean? <laughs> but it took me a little over 45 minutes to go from clicking new game to being fully released into the world, which isn't terrible, especially when that includes character creation, but it felt much slower than its predecessors. And a lot of that is because Starfield's tutorial was like, walk over here, listen to people complain about manual labor. If you got paid per break, you'd be a millionaire. Perform manual labor. Meanwhile, in Skyrim, it's like, that's a Civil War general? You're about to be executed. Holy shit, is that a dragon? Even in Fallout 4, which has a slower tutorial in my opinion, it's like, wow, I have a family with my wife and kid and my wife's robotic boyfriend. Then holy shit, there's a nuke. Oh my god, my wife's dead now. Meanwhile, over in Starfield, you're still trying to figure out how many menus and UIs it takes to screw in a ship's grab drive. Which brings us to the second thing that makes the start slow. Learning the game's systems. This game has a bit of a learning curve, and part of that is because of the depth of the game and its mechanics, and the other part is because a lot of those mechanics are unintuitive or not explained properly. Like the scanner, for example, which has a bunch of functionality on foot and on the ship, which I feel like I had to figure out all on my own. And a lot of basic game mechanics are locked behind skills that cost perk points. Want to sneak? You can, but you need a perk to unlock the stealth meter. Want to move your ship side to side? You need a perk first. Want to use your jetpack? You need a perk first. I'm not sure I would even say I dislike this system, but it certainly makes the early levels feel slower and postpones your character's build if you want access to these mechanics. But once Grandma Jolene got a handle of the spaceship controls and finished proving why driver's licenses should have a maximum as well as minimum age limit, Doc, I'm pressing space. <laughs> How the f does this work? She headed down to the main story faction to complete her tutorial. 
I won't get into the main story too much, but like many parts of this game, it starts out slow, tedious, and kind of uninteresting, and gets better somewhere around the halfway mark. But Grandma Jolene is a true Bethesda gamer, and knows that the best parts of these games are found where the main story isn't. So instead, she went to meet her parents. Hello? <laughs> Why does my dad look younger than me? <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my god. Oh my god, wait. It looks you like a younger me. Then we found out that we were paying 2% of all of our credits to let them live here, and refusing to pay permanently removes the trait, effectively disowning them. Now, I won't lie. This apartment, New Atlantis, I mean, there's no way we could afford to stay here without you. But we can find someplace cheaper, no doubt. We'll manage. Unable to let them experience the hell that is life without their grandma daughter, we decided to euthanize our young parents with a landmine. I didn't think this through. See you again. You just be safe. This brings me to a small point I'd like to make about essential NPCs. Maybe it's because I'm a murderous psychopath, but I was cock-blocked by essential status many times while playing. It's not a big deal and follows the trend Bethesda has leaned towards for a while, but I would always prefer to let anyone die and have the player deal with the consequences instead. I was a civilian. I apologize. Oh, please don't go down there. So, Jolene left her physically and fiscally crippled parents and did what any child does after leaving the nest. Eat way too much fast food for dinner. Chunks? Oh, fuck yes, I want to order chunks. Oh, no way. It's been 10 years since I got a baked potato chunk. Now, I know I've been kind of shitting on the game so far, but chunks serves as a great example of what this game does right. The settlements that are hand-placed in this game are full of stuff to see and do, and are filled with life and character. It's genuinely hard to walk through a city in this game without collecting a side quest along the way. Now the quality of said side quest may differ, but in this case, Grandma Jolene was tasked with picking up a shipment of Chunks special sauce from the city of Neon, and as a lifelong Chunks fan, she couldn't decline. The only product spacefarers consume more than Chunks is gamer subs. Waifu Cup Season 5 started about a week ago, so make sure to keep an eye out there for new releases and use code MILK for 10% off. If people use the code enough, we could eventually get our own milk cup or flavor, so if that sounds cool to you, check it out. Link in the description. But on the way to Neon, we decided to do some of this much-hyped exploration and land on the arid husk of Earth three years into the future. Oh, Earth looks bad, bro. <laughs> Wally was right. Well, it's daytime in... Australia still. It's about sunset. We'll, we'll go to Australia. Ah. Uh, well, it looks like Australia hasn't really changed at all. <laughs> so, planet and space exploration were touted as one of the main features of the game, but to be honest, it kind of just feels like it's there as something to do if you get bored with the good, actual fun parts of the game. Well, it's good to see that LA hasn't changed. Ah, it's even funnier the second time. <laughs> some of the planets do look nice, and I'm sure you'll find some scenic views if you look hard, but basically the only thing to do on planets besides build an outpost is visit the randomized points of interest your scanner picks up. These locations usually have one of a couple dozen random structures, some okay loot, and potentially a radiant quest, like collect X object or kill Y pirate. Please help me! My brother was attacked by some nasty creature and isn't going to make it much longer. Any You're like an angel. I would be mostly okay with this, except they place them hundreds of meters apart and you have to spend several minutes just running between them. Which really makes me wish there was some kind of spaceship or other vehicle usage on planets. Also, I think the alien life is all victimized by severe inbreeding because I've only ever seen a couple different animal types on one planet. After about 10 seconds on Earth, Jolene got bored and followed the chunk special sauce sent to Neon. And boy is Neon stuffed with special sauces. On our way in, we caught wind of a drug operation that might need some assistance after an old member got pinched in front of us. We saw the opportunity to finally commit some worthwhile crime and hurried inside, where we met our new best friend. There's like an invisible barrier when I come through this door. Wait, look at that. Oh, wait, I can't move. By Vectera, by Vectera, by Vectera! Oh my I god, this motherfucker. Do you have an academy where fans can practice uh, groveling at your feet? We're not an accredited university at the moment. Welcome aboard, my friend. You won't be disappointed. And he told the truth. Because honestly, I think Adoring Fan is the best follower in the game. Whee! 
I don't mind the other followers, but as far as I can tell, the only ones with full backstories and personalities are the members of the main quest faction, and our dear adoring fam. Everyone else pretty much fills the role of random, unnamed crew members you can recruit in bars. I would have liked to see more fleshed out follower options from other factions or even just cities, but hey, maybe I just haven't found them yet. But now, Grandma Jolene found herself in downtown cyberpunk crime central with her new recruit, Jesse. And we named him that because the first thing we did with him was cook. Eisenberg? Eisenberg too? After following our lead from the gate, we ended up working in an illicit substance lab on a counterfeit work visa. And after getting our pay docked for using too much toilet paper in the employee bathroom, we learned the recipe to craft the ultimate space meth, Aurora. The only problem is, we didn't have any of the ingredients or the money to buy them, which meant that we couldn't start our crime-fueled 401k until we got a little more cash injection. So, we spiked the chunk special sauce with Aurora and returned, where the cashier definitely tried some, judging by the look on his face. And speaking of his face, I've seen a lot of people complain about the facial expressions in this game. Oh my god! They are a little uncanny valley, and you'll see NPCs doing this a lot walking around. I mostly enjoyed this to be completely honest, but it certainly undercuts some of the immersion and seriousness of the game. Our sauce smuggling caught the attention of someone in the biz, which eventually led us to joining a group of pirates known as the Crimson Fleet, who were searching for a lost treasure. Jesse, step back. Oh shit! Jesse, move! Being in desperate need of money ourselves, we were eager to join the hunt. Oh, they don't even do their own dishes in here. Wait, this is, this is a trash bin, never mind. I thought that was a sink. That's not the first time I got lost in the clutter of this game, and I actually mean that in a good way. They did a really good job of filling the interior spaces in this game with stuff and making them feel lived in. I found myself many times using the scanner while looting just to determine which objects were decor and which ones were actual items. Once Jolene's dementia settled down, we found one of the merchants on board the main base selling this Varun Pain Blade, which did about five times the amount of damage our previous weapon did, which was the axe we got in the first fight of the game. This was the one and only time we changed weapons during the entire playthrough, which goes to show why I think melee combat in this game is severely lacking. The melee weapon pool seems very shallow, and there aren't mods for them like there are for the guns, which feels like a big step down from Fallout 4. It definitely feels like this game is meant to be played with guns, as they have a lot more variety. The gunplay itself isn't anything special, but it at least feels genuinely good, and is definitely the best I've experienced from a Bethesda game. But Jolene doesn't have the luxury of using guns, so she began chopping her way through the Crimson Fleet questline. I'm gonna skip around these quests a lot because I don't want to spoil the whole questline, but basically we are following the trail of the lost treasure. I stayed to give you a message that you better start looking over your shoulder. You'll never know when I'll be right behind you, ready to pull the trigger. I'm bleeding on the turn. Oh, hell. Not like this. Guys, he just threatened me. He said he was gonna kill me. During one of these missions, Grandma Jolene had to infiltrate a luxury cruise ship. Ooh, these look fancy. Oh, they're just grapes. Oh, and the rare bouncing lemons. Those things must have cost a fortune. Due to her old age, she's a little forgetful and tends to get lost. And she got lost a lot on this ship. Well, where is this Larry guy at? Anyways, I need to get up there somehow. Where are the stairs? God, this place is a fucking maze. I can go downstairs. That stands to reason that this would be the upstairs. Nope. Part of the problem is that there's no maps of any buildings or even cities in this game. Just this blue dot matrix thing. To this day, I have barely explored the main city, New Atlantis, because it's so large and confusing without a map that I just avoid it. The only maps you do get are of the solar systems and the galaxy map. And you look at these ones a lot, because these are how all space travel is conducted. Every part of the space travel in this game is fast travel and loading screens. Technically, you can space travel without the maps using the scanner, which the game never tells you about, but it's kind of inferior and I only did this like three times before using the normal method. Let me walk you through an example of the normal method. Say you want to land at an outpost on a new planet in a new solar system. Here's what that'll look like. Open map, select new solar system, fast travel, cutscene, loading screen, open map, select new planet, fast travel, cutscene, open map, select outpost, 
fast travel, loading screen, cutscene, then one more bonus loading screen to exit your ship. It makes the experience feel somewhat disjointed, but playing this game on an SSD and a pretty good computer, it hasn't bothered me too much. I've heard rumors of poor PC optimization, and I don't know how the console version plays, so all I can do is pray that my hardware deficient brethren don't spend half their playtime looking at this. And during that entire map tangent, Grandma Jolene was still getting lost on this cruise ship, and ended up just stabbing people until she found the person with the intel she needed and took it off his corpse. The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. We gotta get the fuck out of here. After her time on the vacation liner, Jolene needed a little real vacation and headed back to Neon, where she hit up the clubs. Oh, yo! Come on, dance! Go crazy! So first we danced, and then we went crazy. Jolene wanted their sweet psychedelic extraterrestrial drip and had to kill every dancer to get the full set. Because in this game, people don't drop everything they have on them when they die. They drop random loot that may contain some of their clothes. This makes the game feel a lot more like an MMO, and combined with the fact that Legendary Gear now has up to three different randomized traits, I can imagine that a lot of the late game in regards to equipment could be hunting for random drops and god rolls. Oh my god, I'm getting down right now. Holy shit, look at this. Eventually, we tracked down the treasure to a ship in a dangerous orbit, and we became the second person to ever intentionally penetrate a gas giant, after your father, of course. Romantic, almost. Jesse, this is a level 50 area, and this ship is on high lockdown. We might need to take off our cool suit for this one. We might need armor. Oh. <laughs> well, that guy got disabled. So does that one. They're just breaking themselves on this handrail. Oh shit, that's a turret. Alright. Oh god, not you too, Jesse. This is where I'll give Bethesda some credit, because this is basically the only bug I can remember encountering, besides the whole... thing. Of all the things I thought this game would be at launch, relatively bug-free was not one of them, so props. We had to leave Jesse behind on his handrail, and after some more robot stabbing, Jolene had to endure an escape sequence that was extremely difficult because we ran out of medkits. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck? I can't see! Jesse! Oh, I will say, it really does feel like I'm on an exploding ship right now. Why am I picking a lock right now? That can't be right. Holy shit, get me out of here. Oh my god, it's so close. Yes. Let me out, let me out. Yes, the frontier. Board. Oh my god. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Get me the hell out of here. Woo. It took about 30 minutes, but we finally escaped with the treasure in tow. Well, wait. Jesse? Jesse! <laughs> Jesse, where are you? <laughs> Did you make it off the ship, Jesse? Oh, f. Je Jesse! No! <laughs> But then he showed up again like five minutes later. Oh! <gasps> Jesse! Ah, <laughs> uh, you silly little- you had me worried, Jesse. After receiving the second greatest treasure ever, Jolene was then given the first greatest treasure. Money. And a lot of it. 250,000 credits for that. That was more than enough to retire off of. So to celebrate the end of her life of crime, Grandma Jolene headed back to the Astral Lounge on Neon to party. Oh, they still only have the one guy working the, the dance floor. Oh, where's the bar at? I need a drink. Then, by complete happenstance, we learned that the bartender could sell us a penthouse for almost the exact amount of money we had just been given. Not one to resist fate, Jolene bought it on the spot and committed her second stabbing spree in the Astral Lounge to finish leveling her melee perk. Three, four, five. Ah. And that makes six. Then it was time to witness the fruits of her labors. Oh, don't mind me, guards. I'm just heading up to my executive suite. Oh, here we go. Jesse? Oh, they're raiding the penthouse. I gotta do some Aurora. Fuck you, pigs. 
I'm the global elite. Once her housewarming party was over, she retired to her balcony to take in the view. This is honestly the shittiest view I've ever seen from a penthouse. It's like, this is gross. This makes me sad. Does the dying woman come with the penthouse? It seems like it. I didn't have to pay extra for her. There, in her empty penthouse with her shitty view, Grandma Jolene realized that she didn't want to waste away in this lavish early grave of a retirement home. She belonged out there, in the great beyond, where police couldn't break down her door. So, she slapped a pharmaceutical lab onto her ship and ventured out into the great wide beyond with Jesse to cook the best goddamn space meth in their space RV that the galaxy had ever seen. So, to answer the question, is Starfield good? I'd say yes. But is Starfield great? Eh. I think of myself as someone who's easy to please and hard to impress, and this game falls squarely in the pleased category for me. It most certainly is a Bethesda RPG first and a space exploration game second, which isn't necessarily bad, but will disappoint a lot of people. It adopts and improves upon many mechanics from their older games, but also downgrades or lacks others. Many quests have branching paths based on your decisions, and things like your perks, traits, and past quest completions will be brought up later, but it's mostly just superficial dialogue changes that don't really impact the already disconnected feeling game world. It's an enjoyable experience with a lot of characters, side quests, and locations that feel like they have thought and care put into them, but nothing in this game's especially groundbreaking. Starfield is a decent Bethesda RPG with some space gimmicks tacked on, and that's not incredible, but if you're a fan of past Bethesda games like me, and you don't mind a slower burn game, you'll probably have fun. The more I look at this game, the more I agree with IGN. Maybe if I play it more it'll keep getting better, but at 85 hours in, I give Starfield a 7.5 out of 10. But I would have bumped that up to a 9 if they just gave you the roller skates at the beginning of the game. This is the quality you expect from a Bethesda title. Okay.